ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to tonight's uh, Arlington Conservation Commission meeting, uh, Thursday, November 21st, 2024. This meeting will be conducted in a remote format consistent with Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, which further extend the COVID-19 measures regarding revote participation in the public meeting until March 31st, 2025. Please note not all items listed in um may in fact be discussed and other items not listed may be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by law. This agenda includes those matters which can be reasonably anticipated um, at tonight's meeting. And so we're gonna start off tonight with a review of the agenda and then we'll do roll call vote. So we have first um, three sets of minutes that we'll be discussing and then a note on correspondence or discussion items tonight I uh, would include an administrative report, discussions on an enforcement order for 335 Mystic Street, an enforcement order at 66 and 66R Dudley Street and 993 Massachusetts Ave. And that's going to be continued until December 5th. And then a certificate of compliance for 1165R Mass Ave. I have updates from our Water Bodies Working Group, Tree Committee, CPA committee, where we'll discuss a vote for the Urban Wiles initiative, and then Park and Rec will give us an update. And then if you're here for the notice of intent on Thorndike Place, the only thing we're going to do tonight is we'll be continuing that without discussion to December 5th, 2024. So with that, I'll take a roll call vote and I'll say Mike Gildesgame. Present. Nathaniel Stevens. Present. Susan Chapnick. Here. David White. I'm here. Brian McBride. I'm here. And Chuck Taroni is here. David Kaplan is uh, not here tonight. Uh, so we'll switch to the associate members, Sarah Alfaro Franco. Uh, present. And Eileen Coleman. Here. Did you include Nathaniel? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. After you. All right. All right. So um, the first thing we have on the agenda, part of our administrative uh, note, is a review of the minutes. And so we have three sets of minutes tonight. It's from August 15th, October 17th, and October 23rd. And I asked uh, Susan Chapnick to take this part of the meeting for us. So, Susan, I'm going to turn that over to you. Yeah, sure. And I just wanted to ask as a point of of um, process, could we go through all three of these and then vote all together? Or do we have to have a separate roll call vote for each one? I've always voted separately. So it seems like you would uh, review one and then vote and then on to the next one. Okay. It's just making it, thought I'd make it easier, but that's all right. It would be easier that way. Okay. So the first one is from August 15th, 2024. Um, I will say that all of these were prepared by myself and then um, David Morgan uh, reviewed them a little bit and, and so did Nathaniel Stevens, which was very nice of him. So um, I'll just go up and the uh, changes that Nathaniel had are in red. If you see anything that you remember from way back when was not right. You can look at that. I'm just scrolling. Um, and that's it. So if there are um, no comments, can I entertake a motion to approve the 815 minutes as edited on the screen? Motion to approve. That's seconded. Mike Gildas game? Yeah, seconded. Okay, and get by seconded by Nathaniel. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm typing while we're speaking. Okay, and um, I will take a roll call vote for um, approval. Uh, Chuck Taroni. Yes. David White. Yes. Brian McBride. Yes. 
Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. Mike Gildeskane. Yes. And the, and I say yes. So we approve that one. Yay. Okay. Now, unfortunately, I have to stop share and share a new screen because I haven't figured out any really good way of like just going to the next one, unfortunately. But the next one is, um, let's see, did I do it again? No, I didn't. So I have to share and then I have to do 17th. Yeah, October 17th. Okay. Okay, okay here we go. So same deal. Um, October 17th, um, there were some changes in red again by Nathaniel. Clarifications. There was another meeting um, in September that we are still missing minutes for because I didn't take them. So somebody else is gonna have to do that one. I'm really looking forward to abdicating my secretarial uh, duties, but hasn't happened yet. Okay, so we've got the meeting minutes from 1017. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve. Nathaniel. Motion to approve from Nathaniel. Second. And that was Brian? Yep. Okay. And I'm... I don't see anybody motioning to me that they have any comment. So I'll take a roll call vote again. Chuck Taroni. Yes. David White. Yes. Um, Mike Gildeskane. Yes. Brian McBride. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. And Susan Chapnick says yes. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing. And then I'm gonna share. And then I'm looking for the 1024, is that correct? That's Chuck? right, 1024. Okay. Okay, I think I've got that, yes. Okay, same deal. Um, this one, Thorndike Place was heard. Um, the hearing was opened and we did have information. Um, and public comment. And that's that. So, so for the 10, there's a 1024 meeting. Can I get a motion for so approval? So moved, Nathaniel. Nathaniel. Second? Second. That was Mike. And I will take a roll call vote. Chuck Taroni. Yes. David White. I wasn't there. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry, David. Yep. Okay. Um, actually, you could vote on him anyway. I think yeah, you so. can. Nathaniel always told me, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Brian McBride. I'm going to abstain too. What's okay. there? So, oh, the 1024, that was just Thorndike. Um, so it was Brian and David White. Okay. So who did I miss? Nathaniel. Mm. Yes. I got Mike. Yeah. Okay. Chuck, I got, got me. Yep. Says yes. So we still have a quorum. Okay, great. I okay. said yes as well. Okay. All right. So I'm going to stop. Let's see. I have to stop share this one. And that's it. Okay. We got three done. That Yay. was good. That was nice, nice and quick. Okay. So next on the agenda is... Um, so we don't have an administrator tonight. He has the night off, so we're going to skip that. And there's going to be some things about that we'll pick up later on in the agenda, but we're going to go right on to discussions. And our first Before item... you do that, Chuck, um, Dave, Dave usually puts up uh, something in the chat about correspondence. Yeah, I'll just I'll just mention it. You can mention it. Okay. So, so if anyone's here tonight that would like to have... Uh, would like to see the correspondence that received on any of these projects or Thundike Place itself, please reach out to David. Um, and David can be reached at the town hall website or you can give him a call and he will be in tomorrow. So that's the update on correspondence. 
And getting back to our first discussion item is an enforcement order on 335 Mystic Street. And Louisa Piazza is has been asked to join us tonight. I don't see her name, but if, if someone's here representing Louisa at 335 Mystic Street, um, please use the reaction buttons or the react buttons to raise your hand or just uh, unmute yourself and speak up or turn on your video and wave your hands. Uh, so we have an enforcement order at 335 Mystic Street, and there was a site visit on Monday, November 18th with uh, Susan and David Morgan, our conservation administrator. And so with that, I'm going to turn this back over to Susan to give a site visit update uh, for the commission. So Susan, can you bring the commission up to date on this project? And if when you're finished, if it's, if Louisa is here, uh, she might want to fill in some more information. So we'll return to, I guess, participants after this. Thanks. Sure. And I'm going to share my screen again um, with some notes and some pictures just to help um, get this going. So this is the site visit summary. I'm going to put that up. Um, okay, wait, I'm not at the beginning. There we go. So I know that um, Dave, David Morgan's handwriting is a little challenging, but I was there, so I can tell you what happened. Um, we did a site visit, David Morgan and myself, on 11-18-2024. Um, approximately 8,300 square feet of buffer zone and aura was clear cut, um, including the top of bank and BLSF. Approximately 6,000 square feet of this is Japanese knotweed, as we viewed there, on a very, very, very steep slope. Those of us who have been to these properties on Mystic Lake, the slopes down to the lake are, are tremendously steep. Um, there is an area um, about 2,500 square feet that's flatter at the top where um, there was a sumac grove that was cut and some herbaceous layer. And um, that's what um, David and I were looking at might be an opportunity for restoration. Um, not quite sure that there would be an opportunity on that very steep slope with all the Japanese knotweed unless we wanted to entertain a lot of um, herbicides, which probably would do more damage than, in my opinion, more damage than not. I'm gonna show you some pictures um, so you can get a, get a handle on, on what's going on there. Okay, so now I'm gonna to go to pictures. Where are they? Pictures, <laughs> share. I'm hoping these will just scroll. If they don't, I have to load each individual picture, which would be terrible. But anyway, this is the edge of the property. Um, Mystic Lake is to the right down. You can see those very skinny trees there. Those are sumac. Um, David White, did you have a question before I continue? I was going to say that sumac can sort of compete with Japanese knotweed. And apparently it did on the not steep yeah. part of the oh, slope. Yeah. yeah. So it was a very nice stand of sumac that was yeah. cut. Um, this is just the edge of it, you can see, but it would filled in the whole thing. So um, this is looking past the property. The property is where we're standing. And that, of course, is Mystic Lake. Um, so you can see this kind of herbaceous area um that was cut you actually th that slope goes way down that's not yeah you kind of can't, can't get a handle of the slope right here but maybe in some of the future pictures there's a lot of construction debris also on site um i think you can see some of it there where you can see the um uh, you can see bricks. The, the bricks yeah, the, and things like that there there's a lot yeah. of construction debris in the back as well right um um, that's, you get it more of a handle what the slope is. So that brownish stuff was, was Japanese knotweed. And then further up the bank was um, the sumac. This is a building that's there. I think um, David took some pictures of the inside for the building inspector because he was curious what was going on in there. There's a kind of a dilapidated boarded building back there. Um, this is more construction debris that you can see on the site. Um, some close-ups of some of the stumps that were cut. They Some of them were pretty significant. I mean, they were, you know, 
Like where's the significant around. stump? Was it the um, last picture? I don't know if he. Let me see. So, so here, I don't know if you can see it. These pictures don't do it justice. They were so there. Whoops, there was one. So some of them were like this big or multiples, you know, all together of sumac. That, okay. But um, they look, you know, pretty substantial. So it looks like you're saying about five inch DBH. Yep. Um, What's that? What's that? I made a him pool. take this picture. There is a pool wow. on the property. It's all fenced in. It's concrete. And it's it's probably a mosquito magnet, but I mean, we didn't go in there and we didn't consider it part of this, but it was disturbing um, to say the least. Where is it in relation to our resource areas? The pool is outside our resource area. Okay. Yeah. And Susan, I don't know if this is appropriate, but what, I was wondering what the context was. Does someone buy this house? Are they developing it? Why do It's they for sale. This? Oh, it's okay. Yeah. So maybe yes. somebody's clean, cleaning up the site in preparation for a sale, perhaps. Um, I would assume they clear cut it um, because of you know, showing a view to the water. David Morgan oh. told me that he actually met with the realtor. I think the realtor contacted him before it went on the market. I think David said, you're within jurisdiction before you do anything, you need to come before mm -hmm. us. And then when I looked at the listing uh, in August or September, they had an aerial view because a lot of listings now have drone photos. And I noticed that it looked like it had been freshly cut down to the lake. And indeed wow. it had, because I remember when I talked to David about this, he said, yep, I told them that there was jurisdiction and they just ignored me. Okay, so then that's so, the history. So, which so I we didn't... need to corroborate that with, with David. Right. So there is an existing enforcement order, um, which was in one of the um, minutes we just reviewed. Uh, and the owner or representative was supposed to come to tonight's meeting, hmm. um, which obviously I don't think anybody's here. No. Um, and then... So, so David and I talked about it and and tried to see what what we thought could be done. Sorry, and, uh, two, two yeah. questions. Didn't also the enforcement order require a restoration plan be filed by yes. a certain I date? I think so. Uh, I don't. Do I have the enforcement order? Let me. I, it was. I think I blew through the um, file earlier today. I thought I saw it in. It's on the Google Drive. I think. Okay. Let me uh, see the other question is, that. Susan, mm -hmm. when you were at the site, did you meet anyone? Was there no. anyone? No. They, no um, we got permission to go on the site with nobody there. Okay. And I think David got permission from, I don't know if it was from the owner or from the realtor. Um, I think it was yeah. from the owner. Okay, I'm, I'm looking to see if there's any, if I have, oh, here's the enforcement. Okay, let me look and see what that is, says. And then Brian, I see you have a question, but let me just get the enforcement order up. There's just, my prior question, Susan, I'm all set now. Oh, I'm not seeing it now. All right, all right. not what I wanted to see. No. Okay, where is it? All right, it? so uh, I had some questions. I don't know if you can find the enforcement order. Um, I'm gonna let, um... Yes, I don't know how far we can go here tonight other than to extend this, but I had some questions about um, the vegetation. It looks like there was a lot of it was Japanese knotweed, and I'm sure that's not the violation that we're talking about That when that gets cut, right? No, we're no, not, no. We're not no. concerned we're about, talking yeah. about the Yeah, we're talking about mainly the growth, um, the sumac so a lot of the growth. and then 12, the herbaceous layer. Was it layer. like 12,000 square feet or something or 9,000? 8,000, yeah. How much are we concerned with? Okay, so according to, let me go back and look at that um, number. I believe it was, just see, because uh, David estimated it. Hold on one second. I think he said 6,000 was Japanese knotweed out of the 8,500, whatever. So we're thinking if you back that off, this is his estimate. That, that you need about 2,500 square feet or plus or minus of restoration. 
And that 2,000 so square feet. So Nathaniel's looking is, kind of odd, but this is. Yeah, so that 5,500 yeah, I mean, square feet is. We, hold on, hold on. Yeah, I'm, sorry, go ahead. I'm trying to ask a question here, please. Right. So that 2,500 square feet is 100% native vegetation or a combination of all these little bits and pieces of native vegetation throughout the property that you're kind of combining to 2,000 square feet? Because those pictures look pretty rough to me. And They're they seem rough. to be, yeah. mm -hmm. it seems to be the violations would be the pile of concrete and the pile of construction debris, but not cutting down the Japanese knotweed because that's just going to grow again next year. It's but but there's a significant sumac grove that was cut. Okay, Maybe that's that, and that's that what we couldn't see about. that, and and a lot of herbaceous there's invasives, but there's also goldenrod. I mean, there you know there's interspersed things that are trying to, as far as we could identify, it's hard to identify things this time of year, but um, there were a mixture in the herbaceous layer of invasives and natives, and definitely a significant sumac grove. And that's the represents right. the 2,500. Okay. That's what we were thinking. Now, Nathaniel is looking looking perplexed. I'm looking, sorry, I'm looking perplexed partly because my laptop's doing something weird, but- um, Oh, okay. No, I'm also looking, I'm also perplexed because if there's 8,000 square feet of cutting in the aura, there's 8,000 square, square feet cutting the aura. I'm not sure we should just say, ignore the 6,000 square feet. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that was done without a permit. Um, and maybe I'm just annoyed because this is the third time, at least the second time we've had enforcement issues with this, uh, at this property with this property owner. I so, hear you. Uh, so I mean, I, that's a, that's a decision for the commission to raise. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. even if they wanted to remove the Japanese knotwe, they should have come and asked us. Right. Yes. Um, so yeah. Because yeah. it is in the aura. Right. Is, well, is there issues with cutting Japanese knotweed just as an erosion problem, period, or is that not true? I mean, it's on the so, edge of a bank. So the knotweed grows with tubas, I'm going to say tubers, and uh, I think all of the bank would be intact. Gotcha. And what was taken away was the dead material that dies off every year and new sprouts will grow up. So I'm... I mean, there's definitely work in that 6,000 feet without permission, but there's no, well, I'm, I'm having a hard time with destruction or altering or, I mean, escape cover, habitat, you know, something like that, overwintering, that, that kind of stuff, bird habitat, that's been destroyed. Well, I also have a question. Um, I, I'm trying to imagine what a restoration plan might entail, uh, especially on such a steep bank uh, there. Uh, in addition to getting rid of the debris that's there, what sort of plantings or restoration would we want there? I don't know if it's too early to even begin talking about that, but... Um, Mm. Yeah, I, I agree. Be around, the knotweed is going to be around for three or four years, even with careful management. Um, and so the question is, is part of the restoration plan going to be to get rid of that and keep after the knotweed? Or I, I don't I don't know where we are on this project at this point without the owner there. Right. Yeah. And I, I, I could almost say, the, um, no, I, I don't. I think I would say that. Um, you know, someone buys this house and they have some sort of idea about getting, you know, uh, close proximity to the pond or the lake, they would come back to the commission on their own to get rid of the invasives because it seems like they would just keep driving up the hill. So there's a lot there. I don't know what's happening if we're talking about a new owner or anything like that, but, but certainly the debris piles, there's an issue there. And the sumac. Yeah. Right. And I think whoever said that sumac can compete with a David White can compete with, with Japanese knotweed. I think that's what happened on the non steep slope. Yes. So there's an opportunity to enhance that, you know, let the sumac grow back, 
because it was there, enhance it with some natives, you know, also there, remove invasives in that area in the herbaceous layer. You know, there's an opportunity there, but I don't I don't know what, what you could do about the Japanese knotweed on a very steep slope, I think. You just leave it. But that's my opinion. So as a next step for the commission, uh, what are we doing? Are we going to somehow contact the owner to be sure that the owner shows up and we can discuss these issues or what is our next steps here? I think we would ask, uh, update the enforcement order to our December 5th meeting, uh, reiterate the request for a, um, a restoration plan and the commission could take an additional step you know, at that following meeting to implement fines if we don't get any uh, any feedback. So this would be two meetings that have been missed, but we'd have to see about that that second meeting. And that's up to the commission too. I'm just throwing it out there. If, if we're at that point, they don't come to the next meeting. It could be mentioned in this uh, updated enforcement order. Do you think it's worth... Um putting in the updated enforcement order a little more specifics about the sumac area because that was native and asking for restoration of that area to give more direction rather than just a generic restoration plan? Uh, yeah, I think yes. that's what we did with uh, 66 Dudley Street. We gave them direction and became part of that process but maybe this it won't happen again this time um are you saying that we should say we understand that there's x of uh disturbance that eight thousand, but we would like you to come up with a plan to restore 2500 square feet the area that was uh formerly um we'll see sort of that yeah the sumac well, following on what Nathaniel was saying, what about the other six thousand? Are we is are we, do we have any issues with that? I I would think uh, that the uh, not weed's going to grow. Sorry, sorry, Nathaniel, go ahead. No, I was going to say I, I do. I mean, I'm just thinking we don't. We are not so lenient on other people in the aura. Yeah. Just because the bank is steep. Too bad. I mean, yeah, right. They need to they need to revegetate it with something. Uh, well, that's what. Not, but I don't know. It just it's it's just really irking me that we're mm. that they didn't come before us. So it's a procedural violation for sure in terms of restoring the bank. I think it needs to be revegetated with something. Um, I guess it's yeah. There's no harm. It doesn't seem like it's an unstable bank, but it should be vegetated to restore the values of the aura. Wildlife habitat is seems to be the main one here. Mm -hmm. So Nathaniel, am I missing something? There's there's bank out there that is soil, open soil, or is it just cut Japanese knotweed? Because if they go out and revegetate it, by the time they do that, the Japanese knotweed is going to be growing next year, anyways. Yes, and the year after. Yeah. So yeah. They, they, yeah. they cut maybe I, you can tell from the pictures they didn't cut it flush to the ground. There's like didn't disturb the ground. The yeah, ground so, uh, there. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that that's going to grow back. It was just cut and it's going to grow back next year yep. for sure. But they did do work out there. I, I, and it's going to be really hard to plant because that competing plant that's Japanese knotweed is going to take over everything. And it's just a tight mat right at the, right at the surface. Um, though, though we could, as Nathaniel said, say, Hey, you come back with a plan. You come and tell us you can't plant there. Why can't you plant yeah. a few willows in there? They'll you know, have, like you come back and tell us what you. You have to hire a professional landscape. Yeah, we're yeah. not. We're not going to design the plan. I don't think yeah. we should be hung up on the feasibility mm -hmm. of the plan. I mm -hmm. think we should be hung up on what the resource area values are that have been impacted. That's yeah. our job in order a restoration plan. Right. Um, and stabilization plan. So yeah, I mean, I agree that there's not, a, it doesn't seem to be a sediment issue, but it's more of a loss of wildlife habitat yeah. out there because there's no vegetation. Even if it was invasives, I guess it provided some, there was some wildlife habitat. And of oh, course- Oh, there is, definitely. I mean, you know, 
yeah. and a procedural violation mm -hmm. for doing that. So I, I'm in favor of saying come for a restoration plan for 8,000 square feet. Okay. And include, you know, 2,000 of it's got to be res restoring the 2,000, within that 2,000 square feet of restoring the sumac and then other native natives for the remainder and have them have them come back. I, I'm, not, I'm not not optimistic we can get any reply, so I wouldn't worry well, about But I would bit. think that an updated uh, order should include exactly what you just said. I, I agree. I agree. Yes, I'm, I'm definitely for that. So, you know, saying note that we had the site site visit hold on yeah. let me let me get this straight you're Maybe asking for native fish. vegetation in place of the japanese knotweed i'm saying revegetation maybe that's what we leave just a restoration plan leave it at that and then they can come and discuss it with us and we can give it for their thought but i think I, i'm not comfortable at all i won't i won't vote for saying oh just if yeah, we noticed you cut 8,000 square feet and only restore 2,000 square feet of it. I, yeah, I, no, I, just, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. But um, you see the point. The point is it's going to grow next year, almost right, before let, anyone can do anything. Yeah, but are we going to say that to any violator? Let them tell us that. Well, most violators are cutting down native trees and trees, more, yeah. uh, you know, more substantial, valuable um, vegetation. This right. this is almost an exercise of maintenance you know, if in, in another place, you know, you could say, let's say it's so and such and such a condo and it's growing next to right. the stream or encroaching into the parking lot. Right. right. But I hear what Nathaniel's right. saying, because this is this violation. This is not the first time there may have been natives here 20 years ago. They did this again. And then, you know, Japanese mm -hmm. knotweed is it's is ongoing. an invasive opportunist. It comes in when you cut the natives. I can't what believe are the other there were like never any natives down there because there are natives in the neighborhood. And, yeah, and didn't, the, didn't the person next door at 337, remember they came in and did a pretty comprehensive, the property to the north. Yes. They came in and, and did a pretty comprehensive mm -hmm. bank restoration. Yeah. And I, I would think they would actually be concerned concerned about the Japanese not knotweed. Yes. Yes. So, so I think that the knotweed mm -hmm. might be a result of past violations. <laughs> Recent. Yeah. I don't know. Disturbance. I, but anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I think so that's I was originally thinking that, that, the way Chuck was, but now that we're discussing it, I, I'm agreeing with Nathaniel. That, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, you know, I only have one vote. I'm just saying that I think yeah. asking for 8,000 square feet when, when 6,000 of it is Japanese knotweed and it's going to grow back in anyways is, um, maybe futile. Be tough. Yeah. Yeah. Going to yeah. be tough. Well, I would ask for a restoration plan, um, and then see what they say. I mean, I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, for all 8,000 square feet, you know, what makes sense? That, that, that certainly, be, and I certainly want, and I think it would be a win if we just got the construction material out of there. So that must have been there for a long time. I have a picture of from 2014 where it looks like the same debris is hanging around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I think that was that uh, sh uh, picture that you got, was that when we were at the next door property? Yeah, at the next door property, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. So. Yeah. I think that's so we need to have a motion to amend the enforcement order to file so a restoration plan by when that's what we need a date and have um, them attend what meeting so uh, it's the next well meeting, December 5th. yeah so it's not file it's like present, you, present you know December December 5th is our next meeting we'd like them to show up at that meeting and we'd like them to present a restoration plan for the you know, the disturbed area, approximately 8,000 square feet of disturbance within the bank aura and buffer. Uh, and then yeah, Nathaniel, how do we emphasize that this is our second meeting, our second request? And we, we put that, we we wanna... put that in the, and put that in the findings section of the enforcement order. I can help you write that. And, and then that we're, we're, I mean, I'd like to say, and we're going to be talking about fines if we don't hear from somebody uh, at a meeting at our next, at the next meeting. So, so right. Well, fines, I mean, we could start doing 21, you know, ticketing, start, go out there with a police officer and issue a ticket for 300 bucks each day. You know, so that's the fastest way to get fines. We can't, 
we can't issue fines per se. We have to seek a court order for fines other than going through the ticketing process. I thought there was a blurb that uh, we put on some of these notes uh, out to out to residents that said something like and or fines uh, can be invoked or something like that on some of the older. Right. Um, we can pers pursue. Yeah, we can pursue fines or issue tickets. Yeah. So some language like that would be good to see on it. And then we could discuss that at the next meeting or at least see what happens. So we have both things. Second, it's a second enforcement order. We're looking uh, for some information. If not, uh, it's possible that the fines can be issued. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the yeah. best yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. that we can do. The very right. best thing you can do is get out there and meet with people. Yeah. and try to figure out what's going on what to do right 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 yeah and and try to get to resolution yeah should we say to present a restoration plan and removal of construction debris or just a restoration plan well you I yeah to restore the area would be to bring it back to its natural habitat so it would include that but maybe they need to have you know like in layman's terms say yes and including the Construction, the construction yeah. debris would should be removed, and I would ask them to file the construction the, the construction plan, the restoration plan. I mean, the I, form I, has I, that I, placeholder for that, and saying, you know, file the plan by I'd say the day before the meeting, the fourth, and then say that it will be discussed at the at the meeting on the fifth, and you're encouraged to attend because we'll be having a public hearing further public hearing on your enforcement order. So file by the fourth? Yeah, because I realize you, you can't order someone to attend a meeting, technically I'm learning. So oh, really? you, you can encourage them to attend. You can encourage them to attend. You can ask them to say that we're gonna be discussing it on this date and they're invited and strongly encouraged to attend. Or set an expectation that they attend. Yeah, I you mean, know, just say this is your opportunity. This is in the cover letter. I would say this is your opportunity to be heard, essentially, because uh, hmm. due process rights to give to give give the person the opportunity to respond to these allegations and these yeah. findings, but they yeah. haven't. I think that's a good line. Yeah. And, okay. Uh, yeah. So. Susan, how are you doing with that? So we okay, take a so vote now. Okay, so I have now? a motion to amend the enforcement order um, to file a restoration plan, including removing construction debris for the approximately, it was 8,300 square feet is what David said. Uh, bank, BLSF, buffer zone, and aura that was disturbed um, should be filed by 12-4-2024 and presented at... And, uh, and which will be discussed at the 12th and discussed five meeting at the 12 5 24. Is there bordering land subject to flooding out there? You know, I think it, if it is, it's very minimal with that steep bank, as I recall. Yeah, steep, okay. Steep so yeah. I'll, I'll check that with David because he, he said BLSF on the site form, but I wasn't sure either. Yeah, we okay, can check that. yeah. Okay, ready for a vote? So, well, somebody has to make a motion. Did I make the motion? Uh, so uh, moved. Yeah. Second? I made the motion. So Nathaniel second. Is that right? Sure. Sure. Okay, so let's take uh, uh, Mike Gildas game. Yes. Jumping in. Susan Chavnik. Yes. David White. Yes. Brian McBride. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. And Chuck Taroni says yes. Okay, that takes care of that. And uh, we're on to our next one. So this is an enforcement order for 66 and 66 R Dudley Street, along with 993 Mass Ave. Um, and so the Conservation Commission uh, did not receive any information or plans that were updated from our last meeting. So as my understanding that David was in communication with both parties and that they we're requesting a continuance to December fifth for this item. So can so I have a motion? Moved. Yep, thank you. Can I have a second? Second. Mike Gildas game seconds. All right. So we want to again update the enforcement order. Sorry, hold on one second. Nathaniel and Mike? 
right. Nathaniel and Mike. Thank you. And again, we want to update the enforcement order. I don't think we're adding any more language. I think we're waiting for the same thing, the updated plans as we discussed at our last meeting. Just a new so, date. Yep, just a new date. And okay. uh, sorry, we should actually we should actually vote that before we continue the hearing. So, so uh, motion to amend the enforcement order to December fifth. Yep, so yep. moved. Okay. Was it? I thought that was the motion. No. No, the motion was to continue the hearing to the continue okay. the matter to the fifth. So I don't think we need to continue the matter, don't we? Just update the enforcement order, or I guess. Yeah, we'll... yeah. Either way, but okay. Yeah. Let's update nice the enforcement to... order. I think that's what we've done before. And they need to file complete plans by the day before. Yes, and I think they were working on it. I I was kind of recalling from our last meeting that we were giving them more than a more than just two weeks. So I was, but anyways, hmm. that's fine. I was at the last meeting, so I don't. Okay. So we have so, a motion and we have a second. This is where I think we are. And uh, so okay. Mike Hill is Daniel game. and Mike. No, sorry. Don't don't answer Mike. David White. Okay. Yes. Brian McBride. Yes. Um, Susan Chapnick. Yes. Mike Gildas game. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. And Chuck Taroni says yes. Okay. Here we go again. So now we have um, a certificate of compliance at 1165R Mass Ave. All right. Um, request, request for certificate. Request for certificate of compliance. All right. Okay, so there it is. The site visit took place on Friday, November 15th with Susan Chapnick, Brian McBride, David Morgan, and ZBA Chair Christian Klein. Um, David Morgan recommends an approval, and he does this because one of the items that came up was, was, uh, was rodent control being... Um, were they following the rules of the Conservation Commission and not using rodenticides for the rodent control and received a email this afternoon or yesterday afternoon that said they were following um, those instructions. And so with that, I'd like to turn it over. I was going to say this time, Brian McBride, if you're available to give us an update on the uh, <laughs> site visit. I know you were there. Get everybody on the spot. So this the site visit, I'll start you off, happened on uh, Friday, November 15th. And you can tell us what you guys saw. And Susan, if you have yes. any pictures. And I can put up pictures um, yeah, for you, Brian. It might be easier to describe the pictures. Oh, thanks. Do you, want to, do you want me to do that? Yeah, sure. thanks, yeah. Susan. That'd be, okay. that'd be great. Yeah. All righty. I mean, so, yeah, so the, the three of us uh, visited. We met with the local site owner and with Christian Klein as well. Um, Susan had a checklist of things that they were um, to, we were to follow up on, and we did notice a, a rodent container, but as you heard, we confirmed it was not um, a, uh, oh, S, what is it, SGAR what, that we were concerned about. Are, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there was, uh, you know, substantial plant plantings throughout the property. We didn't identify any misses in terms of the planting plan. There was a strip along the edge of one of the buildings that didn't have any plantings, and it turned out that that was intended that was not an area that they could easily plant. Um, I guess, you know, just from a layman's term, this is a fabulous building. They really take good care of it. Um, the, uh, the, 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 we, we did walk the entirety of, what is it, Riders Creek? Um, well, this one is Millbrook. And then it oh, was Millbrook Riders, here first. And right, yeah. and Ryder, and Ryder um, Brook. This a is Millbrook brook. now, though, Brian, <laughs> that I'm showing now, so. Oh, thanks, Susan. Yeah, we, we were a little concerned that maybe, you know, just to make sure that the pipes shown there, which contain some high voltage wires, apparently were safe from any kind of flood and got reassurance that that was, was fine. Um, uh, there's the, the potential, the rodent trap. Uh, yeah, oh, this was the strip that I mentioned earlier that didn't have plantings on it, but that was always their intention. Uh, some of the Ryan, why was could... the intention to uh, not have planting there? I think they remember. decided, oh, thanks, they, yeah, I think they decided just right near the fence and behind the building that wasn't viable, but I don't know. It was consistent with the plan, so that's interesting. Right. But there is a significant amount of vegetation on the site. I think that the next pictures, 
you know, as Brian said, are trying to show the 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 vegetation. See all that vegetation? You can't even see everything because it's shadows. But mm -hmm. I mean, on the two sides of the walkway, that significant amount of vegetation um, went in. Um, that's Brian. Yeah. You could you so, could tell them what this is. Yeah. So this is like a, a common area off a little. I guess it was like a billiard hall um, rec area. Um, they had built in one of the older buildings. It was seems nicely done. I had a lot of vegetation on the perimeter in the center. Uh, this is the Writer's Brook, uh, which right. seems... So this I is mean, where we spent the, a lot of time. Yeah. It seemed to be, to me anyway, to be high quality construction. We were concerned about the, um, the sock uh, barriers along the side holding up the bank. And I think Susan suggested that they ought to plant um, some uh, native... Uh, spreading plants to, mm -hmm. to prevent the that sock from falling to pieces eventually and to hold continue to hold the bank in that was maybe the only um sort of suggestion in terms of improvements uh, that we that we made as i recall is that an edge see how the, the brook the brook comes down here goes around the building if right. you can see my cursor and then it comes out um no that that's upstream of the brook but there's a swale can also get some. Um, it it rerouted the the brook, as I recall. Right, it's all rerouted. So you see that mm -hmm. building on the right. You see this this brook. This never was here. Right. The place is that the where brook it comes was, out of the culvert was all right the way there? on the other side behind the building, um, is, where the parking lot is. Is that the culvert or head wall right there with the fence? Yes, where we're standing. So it starts here and then it goes around the brook and catches up with Ryder Street. Um, Sounds happening. No, I think you're looking yeah. north. We're looking, you're looking the other direction. That's the skating. Oh, so I'm on That's, the street. You're, you're looking, looking upstream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You're looking upstream. I'm standing on the street. Yeah, okay. you're looking upstream. So you're actually standing. That it's 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 lawn here. I think that's um, the yeah, veterans arena. Culverted. That building yeah. in the distance. That's the ice skating rink. I think. Right. 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 So this is culverted underneath where you're standing. Yeah, and I remember way back when, when they first started looking at this, we were wondering whether Ryder Brook was really a brook. Right. Um, <laughs> what do you think that's now? That's when the design came in to go around uh, this corner, as we see. Right. And, you know, this it's part of the brook. Actually, the that's not it. So so the brook no. goes like this. Here's the brook. And then it it has this very sharp turn. I'm sorry that David didn't take a picture of that turn has this very sharp turn um, here. And then this other part was upstream of the brook. So now the brook is behind us, where it turned from the parking lot. You see the park cars on the left there? Yeah. The brook is coming this way up further. And this is a swale behind the building that can also connect to the brook. Hmm. I don't think there's any, are there more pictures? No, that's what he did. So he really didn't show. The brook makes a very, very sharp turn, which we were concerned about. Um, but well, we, we approved it. So. We approved yeah. it. And I also, <laughs> and that's why I made a recommendation that over time, they might want to consider veget putting plugs in these choir logs because they might start deteriorating before everything is stabilized. And, and that might help also if you've got torrential rains. But they also, and, and I'm going to have, um, hopefully have Randy talk about this after us, because he, he can speak to it better than I can. But there there is also going to be um, a review of uh, Scott Goddard of Goddard Consulting is going to be doing monitoring of this. It's going to be planted, this section? This section has some plants in it. We suggested they do more plants. The planting is consistent with what the plans were but they might want to do more because they're going to get invasives in there. But there is invasive control, too. And we did see a couple of uh, Japanese knotwood seedlings, right, Susan, already yep. on, the, yep. on the brook. So I'm going to stop sharing because what I'd like to do, if if it's okay with the commission, is invite Randy of Bowler to um, just do a so very... So, Susan, I just want to remind you that... Oh. I did ask you to review the site visit. I'm not giving up control of this section. Okay. So I, yeah, go ask. And Randy, I just want to let you know that this is a certificate of compliance. We're not going to rehash the entire um, project. And I, so just questions that are asked for the commission. Thank you. 
Thanks, Randy. And I will say Randy was very thorough in the site visit in answering all our questions. Yeah, and I think, Susan, to your point, I mean, the, certainly I think I think everybody agreed that that swale will need to be monitored, right? And I think there's a, there's a condition within the within the order that indicated that, um, you know, it'll just need to be monitored over time, particularly in the spring, right, once growth takes place. So I think um, there may need to be some um, adjustments, whether it's uh, maybe the, the, the mulch gets washed out a little bit or some plant things need to get readjusted. I think that'll need to happen uh, over time. So, and then let's see, in addition to that, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I have much else to add. I think you you kind of stated everything, the rodent thing, uh, right? They did confirm that there is no rodent side within those traps. And I actually even think that they've removed the traps uh, since that time we were out there last Friday. So, um yeah, I, I don't really have anything else to add. I'd be happy to answer any other, if there's any other questions or, or concerns from the, from the commission. Thanks, Randy. I just want to point out a few things to the commission. So there are continuing conditions um, that, of course, we have to be concerned about. Um, and we went through all the continuing conditions on the site visit. Um, the ones that I'd like to point out um, are... We didn't, and, and so I want to ask you, Randy, uh, we had a condition 42 that the applicant shall submit copies of the SWIP inspections, and they weren't aware of that. So you were going to forward those to David? I did, right? yeah. I did. did forward those to David on Monday of this week. Uh, I think 50, 58 of those SWIP reports that he had received. Lovely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. And then um, 40... Uh, Number 40 was the applicant shall conduct catch base and some cleanings at the end of the project. Yep, that was done. Confirm that those were done. Yep, we indicated that within our letter as part Great. of the request. Yep. Great. Um, you submitted a written statement with that stamped. So you got that done. That was number 38. I'm just going through the ones that they need for um, a COC and, and if they were done. Um, the stormwater management system, we had 50, 51, and 52 about uh, monitoring the system, et cetera. Do you remember those, Randy? Professional engineer to oversee the installation of the stormwater, of affidavit affirming the annual training of the app, the person who's checking it out, right. following the O&M plan. So... You answered those in the affirmative, correct? I, correct, yes. Okay. So, Randy, how were those? Um, so, it talks about training and instruction on ongoing basis. How um, how are you showing that that's happening on an ongoing basis? Is there a data log? Is there a data log for any of this stuff there that is, Susan's there's, bringing up? There's an O&M log that, that we included that really that includes part of that. Uh, mm -hmm. within with the, within the request that we had submitted yeah and once the certificate of compliance is submitted and issued where is this data log or where is this data booklet found i mean i guess uh i guess it'll be up to the to the to the to the building owners i'm not sure where they're gonna where they're gonna keep it within the building um but it'll need to be kept and maintained as you know as part of as part of the order so I'm not sure if we had this in the order of condition, but if an acknowledgement, I thought there was mention of that from what Susan said. Um, do you have that acknowledgement from the owners that they have to, uh, they understand that there's an order of conditions and there's certain conditions they have to continue oh, yeah. in that perpetuity? Was, that mm -hmm. was done, yes. And that was done at the onset once, you know, once, once the order was issued three years ago or two and a half years ago. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right, Susan, I just wanted to verify that there was a, written log somewhere on site. Thank you. Um, 53 was a snow storage. Um, there's, we actually learned there's gonna be no snow storage on site. It's gonna be trucked out because it really, it's a very tight site. Mm -hmm. There's no room to put it. And that's in the O&M plan. Um, and then the only two um, continuing conditions that are not yet met, and it has to do with legal issues, are number 56 and 57. Um, 56 says that um, based on the applicant's agreement to the Conservation Commission to adhere to the conditions of the comprehensive permit, the land under the relocated rider brook, this land underwater, shall be protected in perpetuity through a recorded deed restriction. And 57 
is similar that the bank of the relocated book also shall be protected in perpetuity. And I understand that there's going to be a conservation restriction, a CR held on this brook, and that legal is working that out, town council and David Morgan and the owners. Is that correct, Randy? Randy is that your understanding? That, that, that is correct. I know we were included in some of those correspondence. There's been a lot of back and forth. It actually started back in the summer um, where the towns, there was some back and forth about the exhibit as well as that 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 CR language that needs to be included. And then um, they're actually, we need to, we're kind of starting from zero. The town, um, the town's council want us to use this. It's called the long form as part of the uh, the CR language. So we need to, there, there needs to be some coordination to kind of finalize that between both the town's council and the uh, the ownership's attorney. Is it a, a conservation restriction or is it a deed restriction? I don't know. I... A conservation restriction. I don't think it could, we could get a con the state to sign a conservation restriction, whereas the easement might be something else. But yeah, so we wrote, we wanted a recorded deed restriction. But then yeah. when I was on site with David Morgan and Christian, they said they think it's going to turn into a CR. And that's what confused me, Nathaniel, because we had written in our um, in our special conditions a deed restriction. So okay. I don't know. Right. I it can is kind of a... with David on that. Maybe yes. you can, yeah, maybe you can touch base with him. However, um, David is still recommending that that we um they've requested a COC that we granted, even if these two conditions can't be met, because they are required to be met under the comprehensive permits. It's not like we're losing it oh, okay. there. Right. It's the That's same right. condition. Yeah. We just okay. reiterated it in our permit. Yep. So that that would make sense to me if it was a deed restriction, but a conservation restriction, who's going to hold the conservation That's what restriction? I asked. Right. I asked that at, mm -hmm. you know, at the site visit. I said, then who's this holding? This is also new to me. I talked to David a couple times this week and this afternoon also, and he did tell me that he recommended this, but I didn't understand this part. I've had some problems with signing off on a certificate of compliance and these this type of loose end deed restriction. That's mostly engineering in my town, but conservation restriction would be something I would have to do. And it seems like you lose the attention of the developers or the homeowners once that happens. So I just want everyone to be aware of that. And Randy, this is no reflection on you or this project. I'm just saying that I just found this out for the first time uh -huh. that we're waiting for something that was in our order of conditions. And uh, I'm not so sure I would have been so quick to say we're ready to um, proceed. Uh -huh. But I don't know what the conversations were with town council. So I don't know if anyone else has anything to add to that or if they feel and kind of feel like I do. I mean, we could get some information. David will be at our next meeting on December 5th, but we could also talk to uh, town council between the two meetings and find out what, we're, what we are actually waiting for. Deed restriction, conservation restriction. I know that they love to sign off on the conservation restrictions before the end of the year, but I think Nathaniel is wondering, just like I am, that this is such a small piece of property, it doesn't usually turn into a conservation restriction. Yeah, Chuck, I'm with you. I think I would like to get this sorted out, uh, get more information as to what's being done and prepared and when it's gonna be finalized. Uh, and so I recommend continuing this to the next meeting until we get that information. Okay, can I have a second? Second. All right. So Randy, we're going to be continuing this to December 5th where, where David Morgan is going to be back. And um, both me and Susan will update him next week and you'll be able to give him a call and find out what we're actually looking for for that meeting. So we have a motion. We have a second. And um, who, who made the motion again? So, uh, Nathaniel. May I ask a second? Question? Sure. So a couple Mine. things. I know that ahead, the, the, the town did just grant the final CEO, I think, yesterday on the project. If that gives any level of comfort on things. But uh, so are, are you looking for this, whether it's a CEO, whether it's a conservation restriction or the deed restriction to be to be finalized before the, you issue the order? Uh, I'm sorry, the, the certificate of compliance? 
I would, if it's a conservation right. restriction, I would say finalized. If it's, if it's a deed restriction, I would just have comfort in moving forward. Um, that's, that would be me, but I'm one member of, of the commission. Nathaniel, did you have something to say? Yeah, I was going to say, as a, as a practical matter, I don't think you can get a CR approved in two weeks. So that's what makes me think is a deed restriction. But I, yeah, 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 I wasn't thinking it was yeah, going to be two yeah, weeks. Yeah, ideally, it, ideally, it would be recorded, but I'm comforted by the fact that there's also the comprehensive permit um, hanging over you to do that as well. Although it, it, may, it does make me wonder if they issued the, uh, the certificate of occupancy, how that relates to the comprehensive permit and signing off for that but i just think we need to know what's what's be, what's being proposed and how, when it's going to be recorded but i would say ideally it would be recorded by in two weeks um if if you want us to say that to get it done we're happy to say that but i'm also happy to just say we'd like it up we'd like an update and a copy of what's being proposed even if it's not recorded by in two weeks okay it shouldn't be hard. I mean, if there's back and forth between the council for the owner and town council, there should be a draft that the commission should be able to look at, even if it's not, even if it's 90% of the way there. Okay. Nathaniel, you. will you follow up on this? Because you understand that. Sure. Yeah, I can do that. I, I just need, um, if one of you can forward me the associate town council's email address, I think I have mics somewhere, but not David or Chuck, oh, sorry, Chuck or Susan, if, if either of you have that. I don't I have guess. it. I don't have it okay. either. All right, so okay. Wait for David oh. Well, he's yeah. going to be in the office tomorrow. Nathaniel, maybe you should just okay. reach out to him. He'll be in, okay. the in the morning. Oh, we will. Okay, I'll reach out to him. Thanks. Well, I'm sorry about that, Randy, because um, I didn't understand the intricacies of these. Oh. Yeah, and I, and I and honestly, I wasn't. I haven't been part of those discussions between the two attorneys about that whatever is being finalized. So I don't know really the details and the intricacies of all that. So um, I, I wish I had the answers, but I don't. Okay, so no we'll worries. continue. Yeah. yeah, we'll continue to December fifth um, to get that information. Okay. And Did you find out who seconded? It was Nathaniel and Mike. And Mike. Right. Yeah. Okay, so, so now we just need a vote. Yep. All right. So I'm going to start with Susan since she's right there. Yes. Susan mm -hmm. says yes. David White. Yes. Brian McBride. Yes. <laughs> Mike Gildas game. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. And Chuck Taroni says yes. This will be continued until December 5th. All right. Thank you, Randy. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Randy. So now we're going to turn to Water Bodies Working Group. Susan, <laughs> so I know there's a lot here that I, the Water Bodies Working Group, David White, usually gives us an update. Um, I know Not much new, actually. Well, I think there was some questions about the fishing line discussion. I don't know if there was one or if you can update us on that. And, I have uh, not heard anything further about that. I think, I think David Morgan is going to check on making connections with people. Mm-hmm. And I know we're putting you on the spot a little bit here, but um, do you want you... me to update on the fishing line? The parking wreck is also going to. Yeah, parking. It was came up. A, it was the parking wreck. Right. Parking wreck, and it didn't. Right. Yeah. I think yeah, Susan might have someone. some information. I heard her say she can speak to it. I think you have the you have David's notes, right? Yeah, I have David's notes. So. Um, Based on recent events at which at least two birds were harmed by a carelessly discarded fishing line, and those of you who may or may not have heard, one was a great blue heron, and I forgot what the other one was. was a, one was a night heron. I a think. night heron, and Just one was a great blue heron. Yeah. There, were, yeah. there were two. Um, the Save Arlington Wildlife has requested that the town revisit the work of a previous working group that investigated the issue. Um, there used to be a fishing line working group, and um, my understanding from talking to um, one of the members of that group uh, is that the outcome was just putting in a PVC pipe to hold discarded um, fishing line. I, I remember seeing those around Hills Pond and Monotomy. They've since been removed because um, they were ineffective. 
Um, this person that I spoke to was concerned that the previous working group was, wasn't was effective um, and they're hoping that it can be resurrected um, with members of membership that included Conservation yeah. Commission, Park and Rec, as well as the public so that it would have um, a broader reach. Um, Recreation Director Natasha Waden has agreed to review the working group's past findings and report to Park and Rec for a follow-up. Um, and David Morgan will discuss opportunities for the Conservation Commission involvement yes. with Natasha Waden. Personally, what I'm concerned about is <laughs> we talk about this. It's mentioned by Park and Rec. Individual residents have talked about it. People who are volunteer and just, I have a neighbor who who's removing it on Spy Pond when he goes, you know, fishing or kayaking with his son. Other people are doing that. You know, it nothing's getting done. It's just being talked about. So I would love to advance this issue and really um, have the Conservation Commission promote a working group. Oh. So that so that it gets done. I guess we could wait and see what Natasha comes up with, but I'm just concerned that it's not going anywhere. It's my feeling. Two thoughts. I think that we should ask David to prior, prioritize it perhaps in his conversations with Natasha. I think they're just starting to have their monthly meetings. And I think if we convey to David that uh, this is a priority of the Conservation Commission and give some opportunity for that to happen. Another thought that comes to mind is we could either form a working group and invite you know, non-CONCOM members to be on it, or another thought is to put a warrant, put an article on the town meeting warrant to see if town meeting, I guess, will form one. I, I don't know if we can do that, but it might be an idea just to spark the discussion about it, but that's waiting until April to, or May to have that voted on. But. Maybe I'm just placing it. So those are two thoughts. I'm willing to wait one more cycle for David to and and um Natasha. Natasha to us. Thank you. Get that to, them, get, to get together, together and, and maybe let them see if this happens and, and tell them the priority. Um because they are only meeting once a month, which is yeah. not three. Have, have they met yet? Because I think once, when I think. They did. Okay. I had sort of had the impression when I was at Park and Rec, what, two weeks ago, that they were going to start meeting. So I don't know oh, if they okay. met in the intervening time or they'd only met once. I'm not sure. But it would be helpful to know how often they meet. Hopefully they've established just a monthly meeting date and not let it go to try to schedule it. But mm -hmm. um, because then maybe David could report back to us at our next meeting because hopefully right. he will have met with her. But the Water Brothers group talked about putting some sort of public notices up on the park bulletin boards. Hmm. Yeah, that'd be helpful. I mean, I, yeah, I think any education is very important. Yeah, Owen Root is going to do that. Oh, good. She's going right. to do it at Hills Pond in Monotomy. Is yes. that what you're saying? Yes, David? yeah. Okay. Ellen, yeah. I mean, my very limited experience with fishing is sometimes you lose a line, you know, you, you don't you don't necessarily toss it intentionally into the water, but sometimes there are circumstances Lost, where yeah. you just you just lose it and you can't get to it because it's floated away or something like that, or you can't see it, so it's in the water. So I, I you know, I'd like to think that people aren't, you know, not every hundred percent of the people are doing this intentionally and just discarding it, but I think it's just a side side effect or effect. Of what just lost yeah. the sport? Yeah. Mm. But. All right. Well, it looks like that's something that uh, we'll. Oh, Susan Stamp, uh, she you put your video on. Do you have something to say about <laughs> the fishing line initiative? Well, I um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know what the details are. Is the idea maybe to ban fishing in say Spy Pond or? Everything? No, I do. I think we're they're study, studying the issue. I don't think we want to reach a conclusion like that yet <laughs> but that, that's, that's but, but i mean that's what's that what that's what might be on the table yeah it might be yeah 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 no but no yeah. no one's discussed no one said that yet you're the first one to say it out loud oh. in this meeting in this meeting other meetings of like parker records have been said but anyway which is uh, interesting yeah, because I, 
I've also seen um, chatter about stockings by pond for anglers. Oh. So sure. oh, they do that. I think they do that anyways. It's supposed to be well known for the spotted muskie. So, and I'm not making that up. <laughs> so, um, has it been stocked? I heard, yeah, yeah, I, it was really. I didn't hear that. I heard, I heard a, a inquiry about. to ask if it could be stocked, and it had been in the past. Yeah, so maybe that's where that I'm meant. at in the past. So who's yeah. who'd make that decision? Fish that, and game is that fish and game? It's not, a, it's public water, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Have no say in that. We have no say. Anyways, okay, we're speculating. You don't need to say it's, uh, it's yeah. water of the Commonwealth, yeah. so it's so a great yeah. pond, right? It is a great pond. It hurts, doesn't it? It's like, oh my God, I was our pond. Nope, it's a great I mean, pond. Personally, I would advocate for banning it because our wildlife have so many challenges anyway, living in an urban area, especially with the poison. Um, it doesn't seem like a big ask for our residents. I, I really don't think that many people fish anyway. Um, I doubt that it would be a big problem. That, yeah, I'm wondering if uh, a lot of people fish at the I'm, rivers. I'm not agreeing with you. I know a lot of neighbors no. who are very mm -hmm. into wildlife and fisher people, and they are, well, you know, they they take care of their lines and yeah. But anyway, yeah, I don't I think, think I that's agree either. Based that's on the fact that it's a great but, pond, so yeah, that's where we're at. Too. So and as strange as it may sound, fun. people fish in the hills pond, and even now in its diminished state, and it's lower than I've ever seen it. It's People mud. are out there fishing. I have no idea if there's anything to catch, but turtles, mm. uh, snapping turtles. All, All right. right, what's next? What's next on agenda? Yeah, tree committee. <laughs> All right, Susan, hold on. Go ahead. Come on, <laughs> come on, back it off. All I'm right. just trying to get you going, <laughs> Chuck. You know, you, you always are. Saying we You're doing a good job. Time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so here we go. We got uh, Sarah Alfaro Franco. Do you want to get us a update on the tree committee? There, there really was not a lot uh, new at the last tree committee um, that would affect the uh, would affect the uh, or be of much interest to Concom. To be perfectly perfectly honest. Um, so the next meeting is December 11th. Okay. And you yes. can attend that meeting? Yes. All right. Great. All right. So next on our agenda is the CPA liaison report. Is that Brian McBride? I am the CPA liaison, yes. So there's something about, um, I have this little thing that uh, David told me about, which is the uh, urban wild. So I don't know if you have something else. Of yeah, the urban wilds. Well, I can tell mm -hmm. you. I mean, just just over overview is. I think the next meeting is like December twentieth or something. They're going to review the final submissions from these fifteen or so applicants, um, and two of them come from David, and that is the tr townwide tree survey, and then what he's calling the it urban wilds city. program. Yeah. yeah. And so I, th I forget, one is $75,000 and the other one's $50,000, the tree survey. And he, he's looking for support from the CONCOM, uh, letter support preferably uh, on these two projects as they go in front of CPA. That's helpful to get them passed. Um, th they, mm. they did, I think I mentioned last time I reviewed this, that there was a little um, lack of clarity on how the community would benefit. And so I think the CONCOM support for these projects would be helpful. Um, I think David probably also needs to clarify for CPA why these projects are valuable and what exactly the deliverable is. And I told him that, and I think he's aware of that. Um, I mean, in, in the, the tree survey is an extension of what's um, been done already for street trees. Um, we've Our success with the, um, the hospital uh, property, the Hills Hill tree surveys both gave a lot of really in, useful information. I think there's a feeling that climate change coming, uh, it's important to track the health of these trees and take action sooner rather than later. And then the urban wilds program is uh, a, a philosophy of trying to um, get better uh, citizen engagement with our open space and wooded properties in particular to look at these properties. Uh, he's got a list of, uh, I think, mostly the CONCOM properties. Concom properties. Uh, and what what um, what we could do to enhance 
the properties in terms of invasive species, in terms of access, in terms of awareness. There's a list of uh, goals that the Urban Wilds Program would would uh, target to try to make these properties healthier and more accessible to the community. So that's what he's looking for the money for. I would just sure. add about the tree survey that it's a follow up to a comprehensive planning process uh, that this was mentioned in the comprehensive plan. And this is now the follow up to say, let's get more specific and really do this survey. And I, I think it's it's worthwhile doing, um, given all the emphasis that the town puts on trees. Thanks, Mike. All right. So let's segue into David's request. So David would like the commission to vote for the Urban Wilds Initiative, and he's looking for a support letter. The vote to support the program on conservation land. Um, uh, it's to support the redesign of 14 parcels out of the commission's 24 parcels for improvements such as habitat, stewardship, and passive recreation. So. David is asking for, through me, I vote from the commission to support um, the Urban Wilds uh, request and that we support this initiative. Uh, like which for, can you run through the parcels quickly? So this is what he told me about the parcels. There's 12 parcels. They are the ones that um, have the highest habitat value. And the ones that he didn't pick are the ones such as the one at Arlington Coal and Lumber, which is presently being used as a parking spot. So <laughs> this is what he's doing. There will be a second iteration of this project, but the ones, the 12 that he picked, have a lot to do with the money he's requesting and their habitat value, value based on these initiatives for uh, improving that habitat for creating stewardship such as benches and parks and open space and uh, passive recreation. So this is how he developed the list of 12 parcels. Okay, sorry, but uh, is that list available someplace? That's what I'm asking. Not, uh, he we... didn't give me a list, no. He didn't list. Oh, okay, all right. There's, there's one in the document that he attached. I'll, I'll paste yeah. a, a list in the chat. Oh, thanks. I haven't thanks. had any conversation with him on this, so I don't know. They all look like very small parcels. Um, They're tiny parcels, yeah. Yeah, okay. And the, I'll, make um, a, I'll make a motion to support uh, to uh, support this with a letter to the CPA. I think that's what the request is. So we have a motion to support the over, uh, Urban Wilds Initiative um, support letter. Can I have a second? I'll second. David White seconds. Um, Mike Gildas game. Yes. Brian McBride. Yes. Susan Chapnick. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. David White. Yes. And Chuck Taroni says yes. Okay, so we got through the urban wilds. Now we're down to the park and rec. And I'm gonna throw this out. Before to... you go to park and rec, can we um vote, even though David didn't ask for it, he's gonna <laughs> going to. Maybe he forgot. Can we vote for a letter of support for the tree survey on conservation right. property? Yeah, yeah. Lands, I was about to say that too, yeah. It's fine with me. Can I have a motion? I'll so move to... Uh, Who did that, Nathaniel? No, I'll second Mike's motion. Oh, Mike, <laughs> Mike. Okay, Mike and Nathaniel. Okay. Susan Chapnick? Yes. David White? Yes. Brian McBride? Yes. Mike Gildas game? Yep. Nathaniel Stevens? Yes. And Chuck Taroni says yes. All right. Thank you. Good. Both out of the way. All right. Let's see what else we got going on here. Park and Rec. Park and Rec. I saw an email this afternoon from Nathaniel Stevens talking about the Park and Rec meetings and when the next one will be and all that. And did I hear you say that you went to the last meeting? Is there a Park and Rec update? Yes. I did go to a meeting this last Tuesday. And other than being asked if there'd been any discussion about the land stewards program, which that, at that point, Natasha said she would be discussing that with David Morgan. We didn't discuss nothing more from the Conservation Commission other than someone on the park and rec made the recommendation that when 
since since some citizens come to do invasive species <clears throat> projects on park and rec land within the jurisdiction of the CONCOM, that it would might be it would be good to have a single form that satisfies the desires and needs of both commissions that the, the resident could just fill out one form and it would be consistent and to try to guide the citizen through the process. And that's something that Natasha said she would work with David on developing. And yes, I did email you guys the date of the next meeting, meetings, which I think are in December. And I think and I was, Susan yeah. said she's gonna do the next one. Maybe, am I remembering I can that? Do, I can do the next one, but we also discussed <clears throat> and I wanted to bring it up to the commission. Um, Maybe not doing it. So, so it seems that some of these meetings have little to do, little intersection with the Conservation Commission. Some do um, in terms of the agenda items. And so I would like the leeway to check the agenda for the meeting when it's posted. And if there are no obvious intersections, then I don't see the advantage for having a liaison at the meeting for two hours. Right. I agree. I think we could do that. And we could we could also reach out to Natasha or the chair and just say, we're not planning on attending unless you think we're yeah. needed. Yeah, and I had uh, my own thoughts on this with David taking on a monthly meeting with Natasha. I was uh, hoping that we could all get out of it, but it sounds like Nathaniel and Susan still want to keep their toe in that. So at the beginning of the year, I'm not going to be part of those meetings if David does set up a monthly meeting with Natasha. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, and that's why I kind of feel like we shouldn't attend unless we're, we're requested or we see something on the agenda that we think. But yeah. No, I agree. I don't think we should continue regularly going to the meetings just to be there. Yeah. I mean, even if it's something we should talk about, it seems like David could catch up on it when he does. That's his true. Meeting. Right. Right. So right. I don't see the point. I, I think that I know them all enough right now to feel comfortable mentioning or bringing something up and reaching out to them. So I, I, I'm happy with our, our uh, study program here and I'm ready to move on. Okay. Yeah, I could do that. So what does that mean for the attendance at the next meeting, which I said I would do? Can I just reach out to Natasha and find out if there's anything? Because I'm not sure when David is meeting. I don't know what his schedule. So it'd be good to get David's schedule with her so we understand. Yeah. That. Well, yeah, the first, I mean, you're going to go to this meeting and then we need to hear from David that this has been, he's established a monthly meeting with Natasha. And if that's the case, then we're going to draw, I'm going to drop out of going to these meetings unless yeah. unless something comes up and you know it says hey who who can go and then i would i would throw my hat in the ring also or all three of us should if something like dave is not here or they're not doing their monthly meetings or it's a special meeting that's very important so sure. all those things okay. matter so i'm going to still reach out to natasha because i'm not going to go if there's nothing yeah and, and maybe say yeah. that to her as well okay yeah you know, what chuck said in the future mm -hmm. just like we've decided yeah we're, we don't feel like we're always needed, so but we're happy to attend if, if they request it. But yeah, right. But we yes. hope to also hope to, as Chuck says, we also hope to rely on Natasha and, and David keeping absolutely the commi respective commissions informed, mm -hmm. and, and make sure she knows that it has nothing to do with her trying to hide every or the committee trying to hide their meetings in every building in town. We have to find. Them. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Every, I had yeah. trouble finding yeah. it last time every, because. No, they, they I, I am used True. to the new new place they have it, but then yeah. they change floors on me. Yeah, they were like, <laughs> it's off floor. Yeah. <laughs> They're doing that on purpose too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So okay. Thanks. Well that was the park and I, I, I think that's a great um resolution there. I I think that maybe maybe that would free up one of us for this uh fishing string, fishing line committee. Who knows? Anyways, uh, moving along, we're going to start the hearing portion of our meeting. So we had one hearing on the schedule tonight, but this, but on the schedule at the bottom, it said the commission um, expects that the hearing will be continued to December 1st. Well, not only do we expect this, we actually received an email from uh, Stephanie Kiefer that she 
requested that the meeting was continued until December 5th. So with that, I'd like to hear a motion to continue that meeting. Just a quick question. Did she say why? No, yeah, we're not. Uh, we're, they're still, uh, consultants are still talking about the final results of their swapping information and all that. There'll be an update at our December 5th meeting, which we have to do, but- um, we, we didn't get any new information. Nobody did. Yeah. I just don't want to start a discussion yeah, we'll when we're continuing. Yeah, I'll, make, I'll make a motion to continue the hearing to the December 5th meeting. We have a second. motion from Daniel Seijan, a second <clears throat> from Brian McBride. Mike Gildesgame? Yes. Uh, David White has recused himself. Um, Susan Chapnick? Yes. Nathaniel Stevens? Yes. Uh, who am I missing here? Go, oh, Mike. I said Mike Gillis game. Did I? I'm, I'm totally missed up. Who did I miss? Yeah, I think you got me. I say yes. Brian McBride. And Chuck Taroni says yes. <laughs> so, Nathaniel, yeah. just for my minutes. Um, last time we always made it a point to say who was vote eligible and not for voting, but this is just a point of administration, right? This is just procedural. Yeah. Procedural. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. Thank but you. I, yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Yep. So right. do I, I don't need to say that. No. Right. Right. Okay. Got it. You just, you just, in the vote, you can just say David recused himself or abstained. Right. He refused himself. Yeah. Right. But I would go into too much, but we should, someone should be, so yeah, someone hopefully is tracking quorum on this. It's been going on for so long. Well, I've been tracking it and there's only four of us who can vote, one of which is not here tonight, but since this is procedural, we're okay. Yeah, okay. okay. Oh, it's what I'm assuming. It, am I making well, that yeah, yeah, assumption? Yeah. 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 Let's not make it a secret. It's myself, Susan Chapnick, Nathaniel Stevens, and... David Kaplan. Right. Those are the vote eligible members left oh, okay. on the commission after so many years. <sighs> Is it like a year and a half? A year and a half, almost. Yeah. So our next meeting, uh, this has been continued our next meeting. Okay, so I do see people out there at this point. If someone has any questions for the commission at this time, please uh, turn your video on, turn your microphone on, let us know. Um, and show us shoes and stamp. Please uh, address the commission. Um, just a quick question. Do you know anything? I Actually, I don't think the tree committee has received information from David about the tree survey. I, the survey. Uh, we are, however, meeting with him on um, Monday. So that's probably when he'll tell us about it. But do you know, Is it? are we talking about a canopy survey, a LIDAR survey, or what? Anybody know? It's a public land tree survey. Oh, it's a public land Who's how is it? What's the survey method? I think Susan's asking. That's, that's a question. I don't know. Yeah, I have the I have the document, David. David. <laughs> didn't we get a copy of the document? We yes. did, but it didn't talk about methodology. No, it didn't okay. talk about details so much. No. But it's going to be an, an overhead survey. Overhead, I think. Yeah. Okay. Not I don't. I mean, I'd ask, I'd ask, confirm that with David exactly what they're well, doing. Well, I don't know. You know, the people at Hills Hill actually did it on the ground and uh, counted trees. And maybe and maybe maybe a ground thing. I, I believe it's going to be at least in part be a ground survey, like like Hills Hill, I think. Okay, so um, and yeah, Susan, it's just the public lands. It's not the entire town. Public oh, lands. Just the public lands. Yeah. Okay. There's a list of public lands. Because we did do a, a tree inventory, which was a you know walking the streets and counting the trees and and, and stuff. But what we're looking into now uh, is um, hiring a company to do an overhead canopy survey, oh. um, which was in the municipal reforestation bill um, that didn't make it through the legislature for like the third time. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we'd we really like to do that so we can really focus on percentage of canopy so we can, you know, make sure we have yeah. yeah. This is actually 44 <laughs> public lands. More properties. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Can we, yeah. we can, Susan, we can send you the draft document or the document if you want that David oh. prepared. Yeah, that'd be great. I mean, he's he's probably going to give it to us on Monday or ahead. Oh, of oh okay. Yes, yeah, right. Like if he doesn't, make sure you ask him. <laughs> <laughs> say, a little bird told me that. Yeah. I was <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. You know. You know. He's just so busy that he's. You know. I, I know he's not trying to withhold anything from us. No. Right, it's guys? not on it's not on purpose. No, no, no. <laughs>
Thanks. Okay. Uh, um, Chuck, you did. We did have on the agenda. I don't know why, because we talked about it last time. Sims. I don't know if there was any other update on. No, so. actually, sorry. If while we were speaking, I just saw an email come in from the consultant from Fields and Thomas working for the property owner, and we have a, we have a meeting tomorrow to uh, review things. And he is still pressing. Oh, this is reminding me. We don't have. I don't have an update on what the status is of the tree survey, but. I will, I will ask for that tomorrow, maybe. Okay. The developer was, developer's representative, or owner's representative was supposed to provide that info. From the tree survey down on Sims? On the, on yeah, the, remember the tree survey that we, yeah. That we yeah, discussed? Yeah, we have information on that, don't we? Yeah, yeah we, we provided comments over a year ago, and we haven't got any response to that comment. Oh, oh okay. okay, so that's what you're looking for. Yeah, there was an inventory of the trees. Yes, remember, and their management plan, which was proposed to cut, you know, in five years, re cut down or revegetate everything. And let me just read this. Uh, no, there's a restoration plan. Nothing has to do, nothing about the forestry management plan. So, yeah, I will make a note to chase that down. Sorry, I thought I had a calendar reminder to harangue the guy last week, but that didn't happen. All right. Uh, sorry, that's the update. I'll hopefully have more of an update wow. at our next meeting. Good. Sounds good. All Thank right. You. If there are no more comments or questions for the commission, I'll entertain a motion to, to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Yes. Second. Second. Wow. So uh, that's great. Let's adjourn. Let's all raise our hands and uh, have a unanimous Happy, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah thank you, thank you. same to you. Enjoy. All right. Bye now. Bye. See you later, bye. Sarah. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.